So I promised in an earlier video that I'd make a follow-up with a little bit more information about the Modbus integration for the Batrium EMS and the SunGrow SH5K inverter. There's really no configuration to do in the SH5K. It's just default Modbus parameters, the address and the port. And in the Batrium control software, you have to go through and select the hardware feature and then the integration option and then finally to make sure that Project Lychee is the one that's selected. So this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. So once you've done the BMS setup for Project Lychee, it'll start talking in Modbus to the SH5K. The problem is, particularly with the SH5K version that I have, is the battery parameters are not editable. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first thing is to stop the inverter, which will allow us to edit the battery parameters. Once the inverter has been stopped, you can see in the battery and monitoring software that the system current, or the battery charge current actually, has dropped to zero amps. So here in the battery parameters tab, you can see we've got the Lion LG selected. So even though we've stopped the inverter, none of these fields are editable. I can't change the state of charge max from 95%. I can't change the charge termination currents. I can't change the charge current or the discharge current. So these are fixed in the SH5K configuration, and I haven't found a way in which I can edit them. We also can't change the battery capacity, which is 126 amp hours. And this, combined with the 0.333C charge current, is what results in the 41.5 amps charging current. So now that the SH5K inverter is started again, we can see it's reporting a battery current of 41.5. So the inverter is the one that's controlling the charge current. It's not entirely clear where the SH5K is getting the battery SOC from. In this next image, you can see that the batterium and the SH5K are reporting two different values. This is a problem because the cells may not have balanced at that stage. So I use a little trick to get around this. When setting up the batterium for the battery that I have, which in this case is a 300 amp hour battery, I can only use 95%. So if I want 95% to represent 300 amp hours, what I've actually done is set the, the nominal capacity of my bank to be 320 amp hours. And therefore 95% of that is about 300 amp hours. One of the Batrium's features is to recalibrate in bypass, i.e. once it balances, it'll automatically set the state of charge to 100%. We don't want that, otherwise what happens is it'll set it to 100%, discharge, recharge to 95 and then stop charging. So it ends up never getting to a balanced condition after the first time it's balanced. Otherwise, I've set my state of charge cutoff to 20%, which is above the sun grows 5% expected, so the battery will control when it turns off. I've chosen the long life profile for the cell mons and this provides additional protection if a cell goes high or low. Every couple of months I find that the system is reaching 95% without balancing so I manually edit the state of charge by reducing it a few percent and that allows the system to balance correctly. I haven't exactly figured out why it does this. It could be due to the round trip inefficiency or perhaps the idle shunt current. It's not such a big deal as a maintenance task to do once every couple of months. Okay, so to summarize, the Batrium has control over the charging and discharging. When the Batrium reports 95%, the SH5K will stop charging. When the Batrium reports 20%, the SH5K will stop discharging. However, it's the SH5K that controls the charge current. You can also see here that the SH5K is reducing the charge current to 1.7 amps when the batterium is trying to balance the cells. The SH5K also shuts down the charge current when the monitoring temperatures for each cell and the cell mons is high. I think newer versions of the SH5K inverter or SunGrow's inverters will have different options available and probably will allow you to edit some of the profiles, but because this is the very first version of the SH5K inverter that I'm using, I don't have those available to me. Okay, well that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to add questions and comments in the comments section below. Cheers.